What's going on miners and welcome back to the channel. 2025 is just around the corner and I've been putting a ton of thought into what my hardware strategy is going to be. As a home crypto miner, I've been growing over the last three and a half years, starting out getting into small GPU mining with four gigabit cards and now up to full size ASICs. But what I've always talked about on my channel and recommended time and time again is to diversify. And that not only means the cryptocurrency that I'm buying, the cryptocurrency that I'm mining, it also means the hardware that I'm investing into. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about my 2025 plan for crypto mining hardware. Let's talk about the elephant in the room and one that is on many home crypto miners' minds that have been in the scene for the last few years, and that's GPU mining. I had the pleasure of visiting a hosting facility just last week that specialized in GPU mining. And I'll be honest, I got a little bit of that itch, but I think it was less of like, I want to buy and build GPU mining rigs and more of, I want to get my hands dirty building rigs again. And we'll talk about that more in the near future. That being said though, I have not entirely exited GPU mining. I actually have a ton of GPUs that I'm actually slowly selling off on Facebook marketplace about 60 or so GPUs left. I've been focusing on Facebook Marketplace, selling them in onesie twosie situations because of the fact that when I've tried on Discord or on eBay, I just don't get the numbers for each of the GPUs that I honestly am comfortable selling them for. And you might be like, wait, why are you selling your GPUs? Well, I actually did a whole video on this and I'll link it directly down below. But let me give you the cliff notes. I've had my GPU mining rigs off for several months now, on and off over the last two and a half years of us being in the current bear market. And I'll be straightforward. I do not view GPU mining straight up as being profitable. And many of you may argue this. And what I say to you is making sense per day doesn't logistically make sense for me, but it may for you. Now I am going to keep one 12 card rig which is my 3070 rig, one of my proudest rigs, and it's in an Octominer X12. And I plan to keep that and to continue to speculative mine with it. I've actually thought about, at first I talked to, think, thought about doing like a YouTube series on spec mining with it, but I think I would really enjoy doing something more interactive and once a month doing a live stream or something with the community, looking into some coins, settling on one, and then going ahead and setting up that rig live on stream. Let me know your comments down below. Would you prefer a video series once a month on swapping these coins or a live stream that is more interactive? I'd love to go ahead and get your thoughts. That being said, I'm looking to sell my GPUs and my server cases. They will be listed individually. I decided to go that route on my Discord this upcoming weekend when you guys do watch this. So go over, check it out and reach out to me if you're interested in any of my graphics cards or GPU mining server cases. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at Pinex.us. I'm excited to partner up with Pinex.us to help announce that Caspa is now live on their platform and tradable today. You can now buy, sell, and trade Caspa actively on Pinex.us. Pinex.us is the first US regulated exchange to list Caspa. To help kick off the fun, Pinex.us is running a 100,000 Caspa giveaway event. Check out the links in the video description to enter to win. So let's talk about ASIC mining. ASIC mining has been something that has really taken off and has been very profitable for me over the last, I'd say two years or so. I started ASIC mining in my home mining shed, quickly outgrew that with just the sound, the noise and the heat and decided to partner up with my electrician, building out a 12 by 12 shed that he already had for lawn equipment over at his house. And I actually am on version two of that build out. My first version wasn't bad, but I was very limited to about 10 ASICs, one from the heat and two from the noise. And we quickly solved that over the last year, back in August by entirely renovating the shed and the airflow design to utilize inline fan shroud systems. And that has been absolutely amazing. One, we've added a dedicated 400 amp commercial service. And two, it's allowed me to expand. Right now, as of today, the time recording this, I have 27 ASICs running inside of that shed. 
absolutely insane. And diversifying has been huge for me. And I plan to do that moving in to 2025. I'm very Caspa heavy. We got some Bitcoin miners in there. We got a variety of Dogecoin and script miners in there. And then a little bit of everything. K7s, DR7s, E9 Pros, uh, a variety of other ones out there. One thing I've done is I've really leaned a lot towards Caspa. And it's kind of gone against a little bit of my philosophy of diversifying. While I'm very heavy on Caspa, and I'm very faithful that Caspa will have a good opportunity in 2025 with a massive pump, I do need to be smart and diversify. Diversifying is extremely important. And I've constantly talked about this on my channel with a lot of collaborations with your friend Andy or Seb Heslow talking about the value of diversifying not only my portfolio, but also my mining equipment. And I don't want to venture away from that in 2025. I want to continue doing that. And so that in mind, as I look into 2025, I really have my eyes on more script miners. I wish I knew now than just my thoughts of L7s or more DG1s or the DG1 pluses. Man, the L7, I wish I bought more of those a while back. But I have had my eyes on the L9. I'm really thinking about pulling the trigger and buying one for a January batch. The price is a little higher than what I want, and I really want to get one of those 17 giga hash models versus the 16 giga hash. And I know it's only one giga hash. What's the big deal? But I like buying equipment at the top of the technology curve, and I do think it's extremely important. Now, I maxed out here when it comes down to my ASIC shed. It's, it's full. I'm at 80% on my 40 amp 240 volt setup there. I'm not going to be adding any more ASICs to that shed. I do have a number of ASICs hosted right now, about 15 ASICs. So I really have a choice to make. Do I continue to host ASICs that I'm buying or do I decide to look at my third location? We have the home mining shed here. We have my ASIC shed. And do I look at a third location? The downside of a third location is I don't know if I'm, if I'm looking and I'm not sure if I'm going to spend the money to renovate a shed or to buy a shed and turn it into an inline fan system like I have here, as well as adding in a 400 amp service. So a lot to think about there because a lot of upfront expenses versus hosting. Love to hear your thoughts. Do you guys think I should open up a third location or should I just take those funds and reinvest them into more ASIC miners and host them? All right, so deep in in 2025, deep in is like blowing up right now and to the point where it's almost oversaturating the market. Everybody seems to have a deep pin project out there right now. And everyone is riding this wave of find some type of purpose and add a cryptocurrency earning mechanism into it. And it's absolutely been nuts. Now, my biggest and most profitable project out there for deep pin has been Helium Mobile. And in the current state of Helium Mobile right now, I am not only frustrated, but I'm burned out with the Helium Mobile project. I've gotten profits in the past and I've taken them. However, as a CBRS operator, I have found very quickly that the Helium Mobile team is doing everything in their power to push out CBRS radio operators like myself. I mean, the profits are abysmal. They have been. They're not doing anything to fix the problem with the CBRS radios. They're instead just releasing their own Helium Hotspot miners. And that project has shifted, just like we saw with a lot of other Helium projects where CBRS was their focus and now it's pivoted over to hotspots and they're kind of abandoning the original um, network and infrastructure that they got into. So that's really frustrating. That being said, GeoNet and WeatherXM have been my most exciting deep pin projects, I'd say over the last six months. I've really enjoyed installing them. You literally set them and forget them. They just work. And I love that. And there's none of this in-between crap that I've seen with Helium Mobile where things could instantly change in a month because of something was voted upon and now your unit's not worth it anymore or it's not making what it was. Helium Mobile and WeatherXM have been fantastic. I wish I would have got into Helium, uh, I'm sorry, um, GeoNet significantly earlier when DJ Mines had recommended it to me. Shout out to DJ. And on top of that, WeatherXM, I wish I would have got mine in earlier. I ordered it, but it took so long to get to me, weeks and weeks and weeks that I didn't get to participate in testnet, which I wish I would have. So my eyes are on a lot of these projects now with Dpin that are in testnet. 
And many of you go may go, wait, what? Why are you buying hardware that's not instantly earning you profitability? And my thought is, is deep in projects have a low cost of entry. And I know for some of you, you're thinking 20 bucks. I'm thinking more a couple hundred dollars. But when I look at ASIC mining, GPU mining, or any other large scale mining, we're talking thousands of dollars. So Deepin is a great, easy to get into from a financial side as well um, with the projects out there. So for me, Testnet is in my crosshairs. I'm looking for projects in Testnet. And um, Star Power is one that I found more recently, just did a video on, which is like an under $100 smart plug that I can plug my miners into gives me some smart plug functionality as well as it works on home miners and I'm able to earn testnet token. So that's been awesome. So if you guys have any deep in projects that are in testnet, please leave me a comment down below what they are and why I should get into them because I'd love to learn more about those projects. So in 2025, let's talk home mining because that's not changing. As a home miner and as a content creator, I'm going to plan to continue to use my home mining shed. It's actually turned into like my home miner shed, really. I have a lot of like jazz miners in there and gold shells and ice rivers. Um, and it's got my server in there and my, my GPU spec mining rig with my 3070s. Now, we do have my immersion setup in there, which is not very home miner esque, but it does get the message across that like you can run ASIC miners, full size Bitcoin miners from home with a little bit of capital, about $1,500 to $2,000 for an immersion setup and not worry about heat and not worry about the sound, which is awesome. But I plan to continue to use that shed to increase and grow my home miner setup. More specifically, I've actually had my eyes on more jazz miners, more Ethereum or ETH hash miners, should I say. Jazz miners are Ethereum classic. And you might go like, really? Like why? Well, I'm up to about five jazz miners right now Actually, one of them is an iPolo V1H that have all been on Octaspace for months and months and months. And it's been crazy profitable as a home miner, more specifically running Octaspace and Zill. Now, I know Zill is going away here, but Octaspace is crazy. If you look at Octaspace over the last year, it has gone up significantly. And I do think this is one of those like sleeping giants that I've talked about this several times on the channel during collaborations. And the jazz miners just make sense, especially the ones that are wireless and that are quiet because I've started to put those throughout the house during the fall and winter to start to heat the house and not worry about running my furnace. So as a home miner, I'm planning to go down that route and utilizing the shed more and more, especially as we start to look into AI rigs. So AI rigs and AI compute and AI platforms are the talk of the town now amongst the community. Everyone's looking for an opportunity to repurpose their GPU mining hardware. And I haven't quite stepped into that space yet. There's been a lot of great content by people out there like Hawk Crypto Mining, by Max Voltage, by Mining King, by Geek of All Trades. They've all done fantastic videos on a lot of these AI platforms like Vast or Salad. Think of Brandon Coin there. And a lot of these other platforms that are out there, the Flux platform as well. And I haven't really dabbled into it yet. And I'm not sure I want to get into that world with some of the funds from my GPU mining hardware that I'm selling. And so one of my first steps is actually going to be over the next few weeks, I'm looking at Tempe has a Synaptron node, but more specifically, it's actually an AI node. And so it allows you as a home miner to take some of that old GPU mining hardware and repurpose it to run a node at home that only really focuses on the GPU. And so that is like, oh, this is kind of different. I can repurpose some hardware. I can go ahead and step into this kind of AI space. So that's really going to be my first tiptoe into this. I'm really interested in a lot of these other platforms out there and really building some beefy rigs. If you guys remember at the top of this video, I talked about visiting a mining farm that does GPU hosting and really getting a little bit of that itch. And it was less on GPU rigs and more of just wanting to build rigs. Remember when you build GPU mining rigs? Oh, so much fun. Also so much frustration on troubleshooting things, but I wanna step back into that. But my big caveat, and if you guys have recommendations, leave them down below. My big caveat is that I don't want to join any of these AI projects that pay in fiat. I don't want that 30 fiat. I want crypto. That's part of why the reason that I was so interested in GPU mining for the longest time. I want that decentralization 
and I want the cryptocurrency. So if you guys have recommendations on AI projects that I can step into in 2025 that pay out straight out in crypto, please let me know. I'd love to know more. Okay, so I rambled on for the last 10 or 15 minutes or so a lot about my thoughts of the current states of the different parts of and niches of crypto mining and where I hope to get into in 2025. It's a little bit all over the place, but I talked about the importance of diversification. And if you guys walk away with anything from this video, I highly recommend that you guys look at 2025 and go, how can I diversify not only my crypto portfolio, but also the crypto mining hardware that I'm running. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at AltairTech.io. I was in the market to purchase one of the newest generation Bitcoin miners and Altair Tech had exactly what I was looking for. The Bitmain Antminer S19K Pro, 120 terahash Bitcoin ASIC miner. I ordered from Altair Tech via credit card and was amazed at how easy it was to check out. Within three days, I had a brand new Bitmain box sitting at my front door waiting for me. Since then, I've ordered a boatload of mining accessories from their store. The Epic UMC control board, as well as five of the Altair Tech 30 amp, 240 volt, L6 30P PDUs. Go over and check out AltairTech.io today and use promo code THEHOBBYISTMINER for a discount at checkout.